I'm Amy Cherry. This local news is a service of Flagler County's Toyota dealer, Beaver Toyota, here to wow ya. Prosecutors say a teen indicted on charges of murder will be tried as an adult. Marion Gavins Jr. was arrested in April after turning himself into authorities in connection with the shooting death of 18-year-old Curtis Gray. A grand jury indicted the 17-year-old Gavins Friday. Flagler County deputies say Gavin shot and killed Gray, who was an aspiring athlete following a fight outside Coin Laundry on Beltaire Parkway near Palm Coast Parkway. Gavins, who turns 18 later this month, is being held by the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office and will be transferred to Flagler County after his upcoming birthday. State Attorney R.J. Larizza called it fitting that Gavins be charged as an adult, given the violence of the act and what he called Gavins' little regard for human life. Flagler County Sheriff Rick Staley echoed those concerns, saying Gavins exhibited increasingly violent behavior, and him being charged as an adult is appropriate. Gavins, whose criminal history includes arrests on drugs and weapons charges, faces life in prison if convicted. This portion of Flagler's Morning News brought to you by the Daytona Beach International Airport, Delta Airlines nonstop to Atlanta, and now nonstop service to New York City via American Airlines. Right now it's huge, but could the issues of Bing's Landing and Captain's Barbecue become insignificant? Flagler County Administrator Jerry Cameron says yes, but not yet. This issue, quite frankly, when that starts, will shrink to insignificance. But right now, it is consuming a huge portion of our administrative time. The issue that Cameron's talking about is the challenges that Flagler County faces as it grows. I want to get some plans in place, get the organizational structure straightened out so that we can handle these challenges in an expedient manner as they arise. He said he has a goal of dealing with three issues that will help the county grow in a positive direction. This and Plantation Bay, uh, the, the sheriff situation, within the, the next 45 days, all of that will be resolved. Cameron said that if he accomplished only those three things during his time as the county administrator, he would consider his time a success. From the WNZF Newsroom, I'm Deb Albertson. A former Ormond Beach police officer is arrested on charges of DUI and drug possession following a crash in Flagler County. Tony Magoo reports. On Sunday, May 5th, an accident with injuries involving two vehicles on US-1 and Seminole Woods Boulevard brought out the Flagler County Sheriff's Office to investigate. When deputies arrived, one noticed a strong smell of alcohol in 55-year-old Brenton Hodge, who was seated in the driver's seat of his blue Nissan. His eyes were bloodshot, his speech slow and delayed, and there were several beer cans scattered on the floor of his car. When Hodge was asked what had happened, he showed a badge and stated he was a retired police officer. When paramedics arrived at Street Hodge, he tried shoving a clear plastic bag of marijuana down the front of his pants. As a former law enforcement officer, he should be well aware of the dangers of drinking and driving, Sheriff Rick Staley said. If you drink and drive in Flagler County, you'll go to jail. No exceptions, no excuses. Hodge was transported to the Sheriff Perry Hall inmate detention facility, charged with marijuana possession of over 20 grams and driving under the influence. He's being held on a $3,500 bond. For Flagler's Morning News, I'm Tony Magoo. A criminal justice reform bill which was sponsored by a local legislator passes in the State House of Representatives. John Arking has more. The bill, which had passed through the State Senate on Thursday, was introduced into the House by Republican State Representative Paul Renner of Palm Coast. It's now headed to the desk of Governor Ron DeSantis for his expected signature. One of the main features of the Florida First Step Act is to make it easier for felons to obtain professional licenses, which Renner says is all part of the bill's proportionality. The bill does make sweeping changes with respect to occupational licenses, understanding that there are certain felonies. If somebody has been accused of child abuse, they'll never work in a daycare center. But if somebody was arrested for purchasing cocaine in their 20s and they want to drive a truck somewhere or or cut hair, we're not going to just as a matter of course prevent them from obtaining a license to do that. We're going to make sure we're looking a little bit more intelligently and with a little bit more grace to those that, that need a second chance. And so we do have a lot of room for second chances here and that bill moves us in a dramatic place forward to accomplish that. The full interview with Renner can be heard on the Free For All Friday podcast available at WNZF.com. From the WNZF Newsroom, I'm John Arkin. While the state is putting its more than $91 billion budget to bed, Flagler Beach City Manager Larry Newsom is engaged in talks with commissioners on a budget of his own. One area he says is always important is public safety. The people in Flagler Beach truly want their own fire department, own police department, and I'm quite frankly, I'm glad to have those guys, and I say guys, actually guys and girls that work for the police department and 
the fire department. He says other budget stressors are public works and facilities. The budget process started back in March, but you'll get a chance to weigh in at upcoming workshops and hearings. We encourage the public to show up to those things if they have a concern so we can explain where the money's going and why we need potentially additional dollars in certain departments. So really want people to show up to the budget hearings and budget workshops. No word yet on whether there will be a millage or utility fee increase. And now you're up to date on Flagler's Morning News. I'm Amy Cherry.